Hello, everybody. This is Sylvain Rochon speaking, the Peaceful Revolutionary. Um, today, I have something a little... Well, I guess, I guess I was going to say strange, but I'm assuming people are used to me talking about unusual things. Uh, so, it's not that strange at all for this channel. Um, but something, let's say, unusual, um, a little bit more social, uh, but also talking about revolution, because that's all this channel is about. Uh, how do we change the world, right? And to make it a better place. It's like the Michael Jackson song uh, says. Actually, it's all, not all, all, all Michael Jackson, isn't it? But a bunch of singers sang that song. Uh, anyhow, I digress. <coughs> what I want to talk about, I want to talk about a project called the Asgardia Project, um, which has been circulating uh, on the web for for just a few days since October 12th. It was um, like midway last week. Uh, Mr. and I, I can't say his name properly, Mr. Igor Asher, Asher Bailey, Bailey? Asher Bailey? Anyhow, he's the, um, I guess, a Russian commercial uh, industrial magnate. He used to uh, to produce uh, weapons, including the C-300 and the C-400 uh, anti-missile systems or missile systems, uh, missile defense systems that are the Russians are using or in, in Syria, for example. That's one of his companies, one of his bigger companies, I've been doing that in Russia. So he's He's been in business for a while. He's, he's made a fortune. He's been successful. He's been involved in military projects, which I don't particularly like, as you know, I'm kind of anti-military. Um, but, um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm kind of looking at this. But Asgardia, his project, he want, this is Asgardia, the, the space nation. That's a project that he started with others. And he's, he did a press conference on October 12th. Uh, last week in Paris saying, okay, I'm calling, uh, making a call to the earth. I want to, uh, I want us to create a space nation. Uh, so a nation that, that would be in space, like in orbit around, um, around the planet earth, according to the original plan. Uh, and uh, it would be a nation. I'm, I'm pulling from the website here. The link is below so you can check it out yourself. But in a nutshell, I'm going to just read it so you don't get to the biased version. For the first time in history, a new, a new nation state has been created, not on Earth, but in the heavens above. Asgardia is the prototype of a free and unrestricted society which holds knowledge, intelligence, and science at its core, along with the recognition of the ultimate value of each human life. You can join like-minded people on this new exciting step in fostering an extended future for humankind. The journey begins. And uh, there's a bunch of information on the actual website, um, and, and a bunch of journalists have been talking about it, calling him in general a kook um, for, for initiating this project. And there's on a lot of levels, uh, I mean, I agree, this is crazy. Um, ideologically, I mean, as you probably know, I agree with him. Like, this is a pretty cool, crazy shit idea. Uh, but it kind of makes sense at the same time. Uh, I mean, there's all this, uh, what he writes in a press, what he said at the press conference in Paris is that, you know, this nation would be free from all, from all the nation's bullshit. He doesn't use those words, but those are mine. Uh, all the stuff, the political, economical problems that I constantly talk about that we need to change here, a nation in space would essentially be able to start anew since you're not starting off a land you need to purchase a barter from a current nation that exists. This is, uh, you know, another frontier in space, right? It's not even a planet. Um, so, the, so it, it, it's pretty interesting concept where you can kind of okay, well, here we're I'm building this station, and all the citizens there belong to this new nation. And we're making our own rules. We're making it a, a, a knowledge-based, science-based, where there's no discrimination, no races, no priority to languages. Uh, we create our own, collectively, our own nation. And we're pulling from all the cultures, all the lands, and all everybody that wants to join from the planet, and we're going to call it home. And we call it Asgardia, right? Uh, with its own flag, uh, national anthem. Like he, He's crowdsourcing that uh, as we speak uh, from the website. 
Uh, so it's a, it's a nice idea, and uh, it's a complicated idea. It's an expensive idea, uh, and uh, like especially just on, just on the legal point of view, the way space international law, like the laws that has been agreed on for the twenty odd. Uh, countries that are involved in any way, shape, or form in space, because everybody, uh, every other nation doesn't have any say, doesn't have any funds or program. Uh, they, the, the law says if you send something up, uh, it belongs to whatever country, either by contract or, or, or whatever country launched it, right? Uh, so, but it could be by agreement it belongs to you, but launched from the U.S. and whatnot. But uh, anyway, so so whatever is launched in space belongs to a nation that is on Earth. So one of the first steps for Mr. Uh, I can't say his name again, uh, Mr. Asher Bailey and the Asgardian Project, let's just call it the Asgardian Project, uh, would be to to have the UN ratify that law and make it a little bit different to allow for new nations to form. Now, as far as I can understand it, if you want to, to create a new nation on any land whatsoever, according to laws or understandings in, in place, you need to have at least 100,000 people, at least nowadays, that is. Unless, I guess, you have legacy country status or nation status, I guess. But some nations are smaller than that, like small islands. Uh, so he's he's called. Well, we need to have to have people at least hundred thousand people sign up to the project, so that we at le at least have that level, the amount of people that would call themselves as guardians. Uh, as guardia uh, is valid for dual citizenships. Like in Canada, dual citizenships are recognized. So I'm not, uh, no problem for me. Uh, I could be an Asgardian and a Canadian. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> other countries don't allow that, so that, that would be a problem. But uh, but he's established all the, these little things. And the, the bigger problem is, you know, you need to convince the other countries that it's going to be okay. That, that's a hard road to, uh, to ride. But let's put that aside for now. And let's look at the implications uh, or at, uh, you know, the, what's happening on the planet kind of, kind of deal. And, um, I mean, this is not the first project of, uh, like this that I've talked about, and there, there are others that I haven't talked about that are way more modest. Uh, there, there is a, a city, I believe, in India, for example, that's fairly popular. I can't remember the name, or I can't really find it anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, where, where they they're not trying to start a new nation, but they want they want to um, they've started, you know, a city of collaboration where the citizens there have totally different rights beyond uh, what the nations are. And they re receive special permission sometimes to actually, uh, to actually uh, do that. Uh, and, you know, they, they try to make, usually it's like uh, self-sustaining communities and things like that. Uh, and there's some projects in the States and other locations that are a bit like little microcosms of what Mr. Uh, the Asgardian project is about. There is Mars One, which I uh, talked about before, um, which is a project to uh, create a, a one-way trip colony to Mars, where you create a new society on Mars, totally independent. And, and that's a little bit different, uh, according to uh, the international law. I believe that's more doable. I mean, there, I don't think there is any laws. Uh, like, if you if you start a civilization, let's say, on Mars, on another planet, I mean that it can it can be done. I mean it, there's no, I mean the planet Mars can't belong to any one country by law, the moon either. Uh, just the structures that go there. So if you build a structure, you 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 bring your own stuff basically there, and you build a society, then you can essentially build a land. But in space, like directly in space, like in orbit and around, not on a planet. There are laws that are already in place that kind of set who owns what and that it belongs to which nation, that kind of deal. Uh, but there, there is a Mars One project, which is very much starting the same way as the Asgardia project, uh, where it's volunteer-based. They have experts that kind of uh, advise, and they try to raise funds to get it going. And uh, as far as the Mars One project, um, they, I believe they still want to launch the first four astronauts in 2020 or so. 
but this is very expensive and very, I mean, this is a one-way trip too. So it's, it's, there's a bunch of people that signed up. I even signed up earlier on until I kind of decided, well, I don't really want to have the one-way trip there. I have stuff I want to do here. I want to fix problems here on the planet Earth. Anyhow, Asgardia, going back to Asgardia, way less ambition than Mars 1, but still it's in orbit. It's close to Earth, close to the moon, kind of. Uh, far less expensive in many ways. In some ways it is more because it's a station which needs to be sustainable, and so you need to build it, and you have to, have to send the materials. You can't build something from space to make the station. However, you could more easily gather resources on the moon manufacture there if you build a manufacturing plant for example and then bring it back anyway logistics would be a pain in the earth and very expensive no matter what uh and uh but i mean mr mr asher bailey uh has like nine thousand employees and 30 uh companies apparently in russia and, and eastern europe he's got funds he's been kind of funding this project on his own uh, along with some partners uh, so he's going to make it run for a little bit, and um, the guy's done some pretty amazing things industrially, so, I mean, that's pretty interesting. Uh, so he can he plans to send a first satel Asgardian satellite to kind of start things off in 2017, off his own funds, I'm pretty sure. And uh, there are plans, of course, there's a business plan to, you know, gather some of the Asgardians uh, based on expertise, uh, and uh, and get them to work uh, raising funds or doing certain things, kind of a, like all as guardians kind of com coming together and make, make shit happen. Uh, great idea. It, it, for, for most startups, it works uh, if there's enough people that are really interested. So we'll see what happens. But f for me, ideologically, you know, the, whether or not the station and the nation actually happens is a little bit beside the point. I mean, that, it would be really cool but what's even more important, as you know, is I want to fix the problems here. I want to make paradise here, right? On Earth. That's my phone. I'm going to keep it ringing. And, um, and if Asgardia gathers sufficient interest, and a lot of people, uh, and mo a lot, uh, sufficient people register and believe and want to kind of develop it, uh, it could give a very good sign to the earth that something's, some, something needs to be fixed on the earth, right? That's my thinking. Because right now, what's really cool, uh, more cool than, than the concept to me, is that they, he did the, co the first public conference in October uh, 12. Right now, it's October 17th. Uh, my time is like around noonish, And... There are over 375,000 people that registered as Asgardian. Now, remember, there's no cash involvement. It's just like name and email kind of deal. So very easy to register. So a lot of these people are basically just curious. And maybe they find it ridiculous and whatnot. Uh, they may not be all serious. But um, but it's they've signed up at least out of curiosity, and some of them I would suspect they think it's a great idea because you know it's very clear the idea is to, to to get get away from all the politics, all the bullshit on the planet, and start something beautiful and new. There's like close closing on half a million people uh that are kind of saying that by saying uh, signing up that this is bs over here we want to start something new we don't matter we don't care who we're with we just want to create something like little revolutionaries like yourselves right um uh, the objective was a hundred thousand so like a couple of days later like he, that was busted i registered at around fifty thousand because i think this is awesome <laughs> even if it stays an idea like this is an awesome idea uh, so I'm among the first, right? The first 100,000. But he, he said, well, I, I didn't expect 100,000 to, to be reached within two days. So let's make it a million. And the way it's going, I figure in a couple of weeks, uh, it's going to be, it's going to reach that, reach that million. Again, they're asking no money and no nothing. So it's easy to register. But still, that's a strong signal from a lot of people. A million people is a decent amount of people within just a couple of weeks. Uh, that want to do something, but they're willing 
at least in principle, to go live in a stationary space just to get away from all the BS that's happening here. Uh, you know, espousing co concepts like love, harmony, community, uh, using technology and science to advance things. You know, he, he has some, some plans. Since we're in space, we might as well be useful to the planet. So it's not about isolationism. It's not like, oh, well, there's a lot of stuff, like there's a lot of junk in the in orbit in space, so let's uh, let's figure out ways. So we're going to be there as a nation with all, lots of people eventually. Let's help clean up all the space junk, for example. Uh, let's uh, let's try to, to create preventive measures against all sorts of natural disasters that can harm or that can threaten the Earth. We're not talking about aliens attacking. He's talking about massive uh, uh, coronal mass ejections from the sun, uh, uh, radiations from pulsars, uh, asteroids. Uh, uh, you're already in space with an infrastructure. Might as well kind of help the Earth, like all everybody else on the Earth, by doing something outside in orbit. Uh, so, cool engineering problem resolution, which I always like. Uh, this could be also a platform f from where, uh, you know, vessels from the Earth, like, you know, Branson's vessel, to the, uh, 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 SpaceX vessel, like Elon Musk, Musk's uh, project, whatever, could be, could, be, could be used as a station to launch different missions elsewhere in the solar system. It could be useful as a little bit of a staging point. Um, so it could it could very easily do trade with 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 the economy based uh, nations that are still on Earth, kind of a trade uh, equipment that we can't make on the station uh, for the right to use the station as a staging point, whatever. I mean, there's there's a bunch of business ideas that came to mind where it could be very useful for uh, for a lots of different projects that are Earth based and. Uh, even perhaps from from there, create like a um, a space elevator, which is like a science fiction fiction project that has been thought of by a bunch of real engineers, and that's really hard to do. But it would be in orbit, so you, we could make a, an elevator that would reach the ground. Essentially, if you guys read about space elevators, how that how they work, the maglevs. Uh, so it would be easy to go to space, like using like a something that looks like a huge elevator, essentially. Uh, using mag magnetic uh, levita levitation. Anyhow, there's all, all this stuff that kind of come to mind. Um, so I, I would encourage you guys to kind of check it out because these, uh, I mean, even though they're crazy, I mean, every every new idea, every every revolution is kind of crazy. Check it out if you want. Register uh, so that you receive the updates and kind of keep up to it. Um, even if it doesn't happen as a nation state, I mean, it it it, it could become an idea that can be done here. Like I mentioned, the international laws for space would be complicated. If they have, I don't know, maybe in six months from now or in a year from now, there's like, I, I don't know, how, like 50 million people that have registered. I'm just speculating. I'm not sure. Like, that's a strong message to, it's like, okay, well, <laughs> instead of going to space with 50 million people, that's more than what Canada, uh, the, the people in Canada, by the way, in a lot of nations on Earth, well, why don't we like create that ideology on Earth, and also allow perhaps nations in space? Why not? But let's let's create that system or that uh, that uh, that new idea here because there's such a demand for it. People are asking for it. They want. They're willing to go to space <laughs> to avoid what's going on here. Why don't why don't we do it? Do it here. Uh, I I believe. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping that this project is going to work because it's really cool, but I, I believe there's a better chance that this whole project may be duplicated in spirit, at the very least, on Earth somewhere first. And that would be better because space is friggin' dangerous. <laughs> we don't know what's going on there. Uh, it's a very harsh environment. On Earth, we know all about it. Uh, so I would hope it will provoke that and, and that's really the goal for me. I mean, I, I, I don't really mean to live in space, even though I'd like to travel there and explore and you know, all this stuff. I want people here to be comfortable and have freedom and have everything they need and no poverty and we don't need to work to live and uh, not be at risk constantly to be blasted by nuclear weapons or being uh, destroyed by this crazy ruler somewhere 
right? We want to, we want a peaceful planet. We want everybody to be comfortable, and this can happen here on Earth. So let's encourage these projects because they are ideas. They can be powerful ideas, and powerful ideas um, can provoke people to react and act and to do things in our own backyard here, which is even more important to me. Uh, so, hey, I, I would recommend signing up. There's no harm to it. They, they'll get your email. Which is, if you're concerned about that, well, don't. Uh, but uh, to me, it's, 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 I mean, it can only lead to good things. And if you if we end up getting some spam because we gave our email, well, you know, I, I don't care. <laughs> Google is really great at reducing my spam, uh, and I can give them all the rules. So um, I just want to let you know about this and kind of explain my thought process around it. And um, just let's keep being revolutionary and let's support innovative, uh, thought-provoking projects like this and uh, and more to come. Hopefully, we'll get everything sorted out. Sooner than later. All right, that's going to be it for me tonight and today. Have a great week, and I'll uh, talk to you again next week. Stop it out.